Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing? Good turnaround Tuesday, which to me looks like it started in Europe near the end of the session. A little respite, uh, King Dollar is taking a vacation for a few days. Uh, although I don't believe this is the top. Everyone hear me? Give me a while if you could hear me. I see the volume going off. I can see, I can hear you, Coach. Good morning. Okay, buddy. How are you, Stel? I'm very well, thank you. Good. So I look forward to working with you today in the next uh, last half hour. So uh, we have a little bit of a recovery going on in the indexes as well, but a lot of damage. I know some people are talking about 2680. You have to hand it to Steve. You know, he kept selling scale up. It's in a good position. Um, I'm still not convinced this, that this is a final high, even though we had the damage yesterday. Some people are looking for 2680 before we get better levels. I think 2840, 2860. But I think, again, yesterday proved that the NASDAQ is a weak sister. You know, we're much closer to the lows. You could even make a case eventually to having some type of third drive. One, two, three. Uh, the beach ball, Japanese yen. Dollar weaker, a little bit of risk on, so it's up. You know, I was looking at this yen, and um, you know, there's potential for some people say this is a right shoulder. It could be, but you know, I'm thinking here's one, here's two, here's three, and I think there's a pretty good chance that we, you know, have to take out the high of the move here. You know, we're still playing around with this 78, 78.6% level up here, right around it. It's at 91, trading around it, but hanging up here with everything that's going on, especially yesterday with the Dow down 1,600. You couldn't even have uh, a lower close on the end. So path of le uh, least resistance, probably still up there. Uh, getting a little respite in the dollar is giving uh, a little bit of hope to uh, the precious metals i think any rally just like um you know even if the euro goes to 113 or better uh, i don't think this is a major turn i don't have enough evidence so you know perhaps we get some type of recovery uh i think we have to recapture 1212 to give it the all clear. I know a lot of people are looking for 88. And again, I'm just gonna stand by my tar target that eventually we're going to retest and take out the 1160 low. So I'd be selling rallies back towards 1212 in the gold, but definitely there's a chance. Love to see a test of the breakout up here of the failure. Very clear line that was defended. The bears, all the bears in the COT defended, uh, talked about that they wouldn't be able to, there'd be a short squeeze. I uh, think this may be the high, that 1240 level. But I do think eventually towards the end of the year, and you know, in mid-November, the end of the year isn't that far away, that there's gonna be an important low in gold that probably ties in with uh, Steve's target. And, and I even have some measured moves in the Dixie that could take us up towards par. So I don't see gold thriving in that environment. And this to me is just a little bit of a pullback in the dollar. Uh, the divergence is working, same situation in Euro. Okay, so everyone talked about the divergence. It's just an inside day. So, you know, way too early to declare it a bottom. Uh, the battleground is definitely gonna be at this 113 level right here. In fact, let me remind myself about that. And I know Blake doesn't have a lot of time today, so I'm not gonna take up a lot of time, but this is gonna be an important level right there, 113. So perhaps we, if we get over 113, then you're talking about 13 and a half or so. Just don't believe this is a major low in the Euro. Again, uh, I'm still looking for, I have to go the weekly for it. Uh, at least 110 and potentially 78.6 back, uh, 108.70 or so. 
uh, towards the end of the year, end of this month. Uh, a perfect time for the dollar to peak would be into the Fed rate hike. So, you know, I think we have about four weeks before that happens. So that's what I'm looking for. How are you today, Blake Morrill? I know you have hey, to run. Morning. How are you, buddy? Good. Um, yeah, I just uh, I'm, I'm I have to I have to get um, rolling after the uh, the uh, first thirty minutes. But I thought I'd spend a little bit of time with you guys talking about um, what's what's happening. And um, you know, ov overall, I was uh, I was you know I was short the euro, hoping that we were going to get to the. Um, um, I was hoping we were going to get to the uh, 618 uh, really key fib level, and I eventually believe that we'll get there. I mean, this, this is this is where I think we're at least going. I thought we were going to get here today, so I was I was really hoping that when I got up this morning, we were already bouncing, and and so I closed my short about I don't know about you know, seven eight pips ago. Yeah, very good start. recognition of the bear flag yesterday, Blake. Nice trade. Well. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it, it, I, I thought it was going to play out to 112. So, um, you know, when we didn't get any follow through last night, I got up today and it started to grind higher against me. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to stick around. I I, I really um, would prefer and, and I still do to, to short the euro dollar on a move back to 113. So what I'm yeah. hoping is going to happen and I think is going to happen today is that we're going to rally back to 113. Let me show you guys something that um, has been, well, it's obviously it's a big concern um, at this moment in time is uh, this is the daily sentiment index from last night. And you'll notice I have highlighted uh, the euro at six, the Swiss franc at seven, Pound at 11, yen at 13, crude at 7, dollar index at 91, um, you know, um, um, gas at 9, gold and silver at 7 and 9, respectively. So, really very, um, uh, 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 Everyone's on one side of the boat, buddy. Yeah, it's very lopsided as far as sentiment goes. So, I, you know, like I said, I was expecting the euro dollar to bounce today. I was just hoping we'd get one more plunge towards the 112, uh, 112 level or the big 618 retracement down here um, and before a bounce. Now, like I said, I think we're still going down there. It's not, you know, nothing's changed as far as I'm concerned. Um, but what I do think is that we're, you know, bouncing and, you know, and I figured, well, if I'm going to establish myself as a short in the Euro, I'd rather do it at 113 and let's let, you know, some of the sentiment wear off. Um, when you take, when you take, um, you know, gold, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you gold really quick. Uh, gold uh, hit the 161% extension or pretty damn close to right here. It's uh, you can see the 161% extension, right? Um, Played the 161% extension trend line support. Now we're bouncing. You see this really nice hammer in gold. Gold looks like you know we're going to head back to you know 12, 14, 12, 12, somewhere at 12, 10 maybe. You know, and and um, you know if gold bounces, obviously that's going to lead to some dollar weakness. Again, going re referencing all the very extreme sentiment index readings that we saw. Um, it, it's 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 you know high probability that gold at least does you know bounce now th does that mean gold's going to you know to 1250 no probably not but you know can it bounce from you know 1200 to back to 1210 or 1215 sure and so if it does that it's obviously going to drag down the dollar uh with it now if you look at crude oil crude oil i mean this is a gross chart oh my god crude's just been you know and and i, and I gotta hand it to steve i know he's not here today but man he really nailed crude back when it was at 70 he was looking at it just to, to for a serious breakdown and um you can see the relative strength daily relative strength we are uh, the i think the lowest we've been yeah since 2014 i mean so you know daily rsi is very oversold you saw the sentiment so um crude you, you know could probably bounce back to well probably well above 60 probably back to 61 62 and if it does that you know again this 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 could lead to dollar weakness other commodities could firm um 
uh, as well. And, and that's why you've got to just be really a little careful with your dollar positions right now uh, at the, at this point in time, because, you know, if, if commodities bounce like gold, like, like silver, uh, or, you know, which I didn't talk about silver yet, but you got gold or crude, um, you know, that's typically, ev you know, evidence that we're going to get uh, continued dollar weakness. So um, the cable uh, actually filled the gap perfectly, as Polly pointed out, actually on his webinar and Amanda in our chat room, she's like gap filled, you know, in the cable, we, we basically filled that filled. Well, you can say that's a gap fill here, but that's actually from the closing price, which I'm assuming we're going to see anyway. Um, but we filled the gap in in, in cable. Uh, does that mean the cable's done going higher? Probably not. There's there seems to be some pretty um, positive news regarding you know a Brexit plan, a deal being tentatively agreed to with the EU and 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 Theresa May. Now that doesn't mean that um, a deal is done either. You, 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 the, uh, this deal would have to be approved by Parliament. So, um, you know, but it's you know one hurdle at a time. You know, and 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 the, and the pound is uh, responding uh, positively as a result. So, um, you know, uh, this continued positive development in in the UK uh, could continue to squeeze the pound higher. I'll, I'll tell you this much. I wouldn't want to be short the cable right now. That That's not what I would want to be. Question is, do you want to be long? Well, I wouldn't want to be short. So, you know, you, you can, you, you, you can, you know, make the decision there. Uh, the Aussie, you know, it's pulled back to the support zone. It, it actually, you know, uh, came down to the support zone perfectly. This support zone is, if, if you watch the face webinar every day, I think we referenced this you know, nothing's changed here on my charts. So, you know, this is the top of the support zone. We hit it and, you know, bounced. Um, Kiwi came right into the support zone is bouncing. Um, you know, uh, uh, China is sending one of its top negotiators, you know, uh, to talk to um, um, U.S. trade representatives to try to, uh, you know, lay out some sort of foundation to a China-U.S. trade deal ahead of the the G20 summit. So, um, you know, positive developments may keep the the Kiwi and the Aussie from selling off. Uh, Swissy, um, this thing has been extremely resilient. I, I've been really strong or really surprised how strong it's been, but also a little bummed out because I've missed this entire move. It's like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I sit here and look at it and go, damn, I cannot believe I've missed this thing. I mean, a bull flag still points to, you know, 102.75, somewhere up, up there. Uh, will we achieve that? I don't know. It's it's a very tricky um, animal right now as far as trading the uh, trading the dollar Swiss. Um, you know, as I was showing you with crude, and crude looks like we're bouncing right now. I mean, we are still negative on the day, but crude's bouncing. Yeah, look at this dollar Canadian. Uh, I, I established a short position just about five pips ago. Yeah, everybody knows that. Um, the dollar Canadian is is uh is coming under a little bit of pressure but you know i think downside is limited i think we might get back to like 131 you know 75 we we, we could possibly press back here towards you know the the previous channel you know uh resistance something like that we could you know come back here i i, I think uh downside's fairly limited but um you can see that we've been rallying here in the dollar Canadian, just uh, shy of the 78% retracement, and relative strength had been diverging. You know, we we were rallying in price, but relative strength was not following. So that divergence should lead to a little bit of a pullback. Again, this is with the the whole theme of the dollar pulling back, gold going higher, crude going higher. Um, and we're and getting a little bit of a retracement. Does that mean the dollar Canadian, you know, is going to 128 from here M maybe but i think you know first things first you got to see how it responds if it gets back below 132 and we and we see it we see a drop back down towards uh you know 131.75 something like that um uh i was very tempted to uh take a short in the us dollar mexican peso now that we're back up at the 78 percent retracement here i have not shorted it um a little tempted but 
uh, I, you know, the first time around was a great trade, uh, being on the short side here last week, I think it was last week or a week and a half ago, being on the short side here, uh, revisiting that trade trying to double dip into that, into that, uh, trade is not, um, is not, uh, you know, uh, I, I hate double dipping into a position, especially, you know, considering we didn't get a full on reversal. I don't know if I really want to take a stab at it up here from a risk reward standpoint. It makes sense. I'm just saying that, you know, I, I'm not doing it. Um, U.S. dollar Norwegian Krona. If the uh, if the crude oil market bounces uh, this U.S. dollar Norwegian Krona, let me just adjust prices here and let me grab this dotted line. I'll just grab it and put it up here. Okay. You notice that we might have a little false breakout up here in the US dollar Norwegian Krona. Again, if crude bounces, which crude, I think, as I pointed out before, crude looks, oh, look at the cable ripping here. Um, there was a statement, uh, sorry to interrupt, Blake, statement that the UK... backstop tax to be completed today. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. That thing. Thank you, Stelios. I was going to say that was a uh, that looks to be it. And you know, this is how dollar uh, reversals can happen. You know, you get one currency pair like the the cable that starts to rip higher, and then uh, you know you got everybody else going. Oh shoot, I don't want to be short the euro, and the euro starts to squeeze. I don't want to be long the dollar Canadian. That starts to sell off. I don't want to be you know long the dollar Swiss up here. And then that starts to off. It, you, you, you could get the, um, you know, the uh, um, uh, uh, domino effect, if you will. And I think that's what we're seeing. And again, you know, this is really the gap bill is right here, wherever we close, which is 129.70, you know, probably 129.75. So we're, we're like three pips away from there. Um, uh, so we should we should end up, you know, getting up there and maybe even being a little bit higher. Like I said, this, this uh, dollar um, weakness could really feed on itself, especially that the, the sentiment is so, so overdone. Um, going back to the U S dollar Norwegian Krona, I, I just want to point out that, that we, yeah, we have a little false breakout up here. And if, if the, uh, if crude, which is, you know, we are only 30 cents from our highs on crude at this point, you know, we were, we were about a buck lower um, at our lows. If crude, you know, hits new highs, that could further weigh on the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona as well. Let's take a real quick look at the dollar index. Um, the dollar index is uh, hit the 127 percent extension. It's very similar to the euro. I was expecting it to hit the major. Let's go over to the daily chart, or that's the weekly. But let's get over to the daily. I was expecting. Um, or I was hoping, I, you know, hoping, expecting that the dollar index was gonna is gonna was gonna see the 618 retracement. It did not, uh, not yet. Anyway, what we did is we hit the 127 percent extension. Now, here's the risk with um, the uh, see this dotted line here. This is the risk with the dollar. If the dollar actually breaks through that dotted line, that would end up putting in another false breakout to the upside, which could lead to a, you know, much more significant dollar pullback. We're, we've still got some distance here between 97.30 and 97, but it is something worth noting that, you know, you got everybody squeezed out of their dollar shorts. Dollar long positioning is really, you know, quite aggressive at this point. So if, if um, you know, if if it does do on a full on reversal, it could be pretty ugly. You know, I would think the dollar could see 96 relatively fast. You know, and this is a uh, you know some pretty pretty key support that we would come back into. But you know, failing up here, you know, we break back below 97. This this would be this move here. Uh, let me grab a highlighter pen. You know, oops, or a pen. This would be like pretty realistic that we can we can you know make it all the way back down towards support um hold on let me get back over to the uh i want to grab a bit different pen color here okay erase okay so yeah i mean you would be talking about a move you know from 97 back over to 96 i think that that's realistic uh or or could 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 eventually happen whoops man i keep messing this up um so 
let's see, dollar index. Uh, let's take a look at the dollar yen, uh, and then then I'll bring in Stelios, and we can we can chit chat a little bit before Greg gets here. Um, so the dollar yen, you know, we completed this. This is a double bottom, right? It was a false breakdown, double bottom. We completed it, stopped us at the 88% retracement. It took us forever to get up there. We finally did. We hit the 88% retracement. When uh, we've been struggling now. I'm having a difficult time wrapping my head around the dollar yen. Again, it's 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 a the question that you know I've been having with the dollar yen is do you sell it because you know you have some quote unquote risk off so you 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 know you you short dollar yen or buy yen um, but that hasn't been working um, you know if if the equity markets bounce can we see a continued bounce in the in the dollar yen I think that's realistic and we have a lot of resistance up here so when it, whenever stocks come down I have a very hard time shorting the dollar yen it's just not wow this dollar is really getting worked so here goes the euro you know oh look at gold hold on gold is a that's a hell of a four-hour hammer right here which closes in 38 minutes again gold could easily be back up at 12 12 15 um, we are nearing our highs of the session here's a five-minute chart okay you can see gold's just you know creaming higher and um, you know you get gold up at 12 10 12 15 where does that put you know where does that put the euro dollar my opinion would be that the euro dollar is back at 113 you know so uh, keep an eye on gold and I guess I should go over silver really quick too while I'm looking at gold here's silver silver is actually um, came really close to, to tagging these lows now notice how gold is nowhere near its trend lows now remember this trend low right here which I think is a you know and I, we've talked about it this is being an intermediate low in gold um, we did that in Asian trade kind of like the euro dollar like the euro did uh, you know this move that you see in the euro last night um, down here this is in early Asia you know when no one was around and then you know we've 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 reversed since then gold um, since doing that we haven't come close to those lows uh, we have not you know we I mean that, that you're talking uh, 1160 I mean, we, we came down to 1195 so we haven't even get, gotten anywhere close but look at the difference between silver silver is really underperformed silver is just really testing the trend lows which um, is important because if we are just forming a range here in silver okay and we trade back to the upper end of the range in silver you're talking you know back to 15 from you know 14 or we, we were just sub 14 but from 14 to 15 that's a pretty big move in the silver market so that is uh, that that I think is certainly a risk if you're uh, if you're short silver that you know we can bounce back up there especially seeing what gold's doing today what's um, the range on that uh, rectangle there Blake that's what it looks like to me or right gonna, here uh, yeah 14 to 15 I mean you know 13 okay, so, 15, okay yeah. so breakdown takes you to the low 13 handle on a measured yeah. move yeah if it, if it yeah maybe even below that if it if it ended up breaking thank you partner mm-hmm but again you know with what Coffee you had it yes uh, yeah of course <laughs> um, Wow uh, Donald Trump is really really um, trolling uh, Macron in France today on Twitter yeah, he's been he's been really all over him all day long. <laughs> That's a, it's pretty good. You got to read his tweets. Um, he's really he's really uh, he's really Is trolling. He mad at him. This trip, he's, they're not getting along. The yeah, bromance. No, no, that that they're, is not. They're getting some co a couple's counseling, I think. Before it might, might be, might be, yeah, a little, uh, you know. <laughs> interesting trip to trip to Europe um, anyway um, so yeah he's out he's out uh, taking to Twitter this morning on uh, it's like high school <laughs> <laughs> all right man I'll shut up <laughs> so um, so anyway Stelios good morning good morning everybody how's it going uh, it's funny 
Very good. It's funny you should mention Macron because, you know, um, one of the main reasons why Trump is having a go at him because um, yesterday, was it, or the day before, he was mentioning a unified uh, European army, um, which is, is, you know, it's a punchy statement to say, you know, that, well, we yeah. need a... Right. You know, it, I don't know. I don't know if you want to go there, really. But still, you know, Trump took the opportunity to have a go at him. No, no. But I mean, it's like, oh, let's protect ourselves from China and the U.S., you know, with a unified European but army. Isn't the right? U.S. supposed to be the U.S. supposed to be an ally, right? Well, why right. protect the U.S.? I don't get right. that. Right, right. Right. Well, but this is this is like the back and forth that you saw when, you know, uh, uh, when 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 uh, uh President Trump traveled to Europe, and um, you know they and they and, and Macron was speaking um, in front of you know the world with uh, with with Trump and and Merkel and uh, you know and, and and others in the in the audience. He was really singling them out. So this is this is a this is a back and forth. That's what yeah. You know, still I heard they're raising the uh, draft age in Greece for the new European military to forty eight. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah good thing you're in shape now i know why you've been hitting the gym so hard <laughs> so yeah it, no, uh, comment. no comment <laughs> so, but, but it's been it's it's a back and forth between these two you know world leaders which is interesting you know to say the least so yeah it's um you know we talk about this a lot on the chat room as well it's difficult you know i look i look at the world leaders at, right now and it's difficult to find you know, many, uh, many, I want, I want to say decent ones, but, you know, that sounds maybe a little bit too much. But, you know, it's very difficult to find uh, leaders who are, who inspire you these days. It's, it's really sad. I think it's, just, you know, I, I'm influenced by Greece where we're, you know, we're horrible. But, you know, even other, you know, developed countries, um, I'm seeing kind of the same, right? So it's it's very disappointing. I, I think it is from a world perspective you know um yeah. so anyway but but uh yeah. but needless to say it's not affecting the fx market right now it's just a little bit <laughs> i just thought yeah. I'd, i thought i'd bring it up because i did <laughs> the tweet and i'm like whoa uh um so um so anyway uh okay. now regarding the euro did did you ever publish your euro blog i published it yesterday yes you and, did uh, okay. I, and 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 pardon me for being, I, I was away from the computer a lot yesterday. I was helping my wife with uh, with some of her her, her business um, <laughs> uh, logistics uh, yesterday. So were all those boxes in your garage, Blake? I have them in the garage. I have them in the storage unit. I have. Oh my uh, God. Yeah, in two storage units. Uh, I have one storage unit out front of our, uh, you know, on the side of our home. They were supposed to bring this uh, these pods. Have you ever seen the storage pods? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so they, they couldn't wheel it in, a, you know, even though we have an RV gate into our backyard. Uh, and they told us we could originally bring this pod into our backyard, which had been less of an eyesore. They, uh, they, they decided as they got there, no, we can't put it back there. I'm like, whoa. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so we have, yeah. Um, okay. My my. And for those of you that don't know, my wife is she has a shipping or a shipping a, a gifting company, and and she had uh, boxes that are for the holidays and uh, going into next year. We have so many, uh, it's unbelievable. So anyway, <laughs> it's just uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a logistic nightmare. So anyway, Stelio, yeah. so I didn't get a chance to I didn't get a chance to actually see your blog. Uh, I, mean, I wasn't sure if it got posted and I hadn't had a chance to look for it this morning. So you did. Yeah, I've, I've actually put the link in the chat box. OK, you. great. Uh, so we did in my stream still. Uh, OK, we'll do. Yes. Oh, you told okay. me and I forgot. Um, yes, so it's uh, yeah, it's in our in our um, blog section, which is free for everybody. And it's um, basically it's uh, like um, uh, with the um, uh, with the occasion of Italy and everything that's happening to Italy, you know, I just had a, a broad view at the European Union, you know, how it formed and all that and what is happening in Italy right now. And it's, you know, it's it's one of those situations which is a bit of a conundrum because, you know, the Italians, uh, we've said this before, the Italians are pushing for a big, bigger, let's say, budget deficit so that they can kickstart their economy and the Europeans don't like that. Um, on the other hand, you know, the, the, the Italians do have a lot of power over the EU because their economy is huge and their debt is huge. But having said that, without the ECB buying Italian bonds, you can be sure that their yield, the Italian yield, would not be as low as it is now. So it's it's a kind of a um, 
a seesaw, a balance of power, you know, who's going to, uh, it's like a game of chicken, but both sides need to cooperate because if they don't, you know, what's going to happen? It's, um, it's, it's a very scary thought to think about what's going to happen if, you know, the Italians decide to leave the euro or decide to just, you know, do whatever they want to do. So uh, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, question to which, you know, there are no definitive answers, but, you know, I, I try to have a, a look at the EU, how, it's, how it works, how Italy comes into it and, you know, what the potential scenarios are. Yeah, and that's and it's well worth the read, you guys. So, um, um, so it's you know make sure that you you read that blog. I think it's I, I read the preliminary blog before you actually released yeah. it. I think it's a it's a it's a really it's a really great um, great overview of of what's happening. So, um, now speaking of you know the euro, um, the, so hey, the hey. euro. Oh, hey, Greg, how's it going? Fine. How are you? Good. Good, good yeah. to have you here. Um, before I, I pass it over to uh, Greg, because uh, he's going to give you a great view of, uh, of 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 what's happening from an Elliott Wave perspective. Uh, great, by the way, Greg, a great video on your week ahead. You 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 said you looked for the euro for a slightly lower low, which we got, and now we're getting that bounce. So I'm sure everybody wants to hear what. Yeah. What you have to say regarding the the the, uh, the dollar right now, but I, I was just going to say that the euro, you know, is going to find resistance up here at 113. Whether we get a foothold back above it, break back above it, on a sustained basis or not, I think this is going to at least give us an opportunity for 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 a selling opportunity intraday. Um, you know, I always look for these these areas that that like you know. 113 was such a big level that it's going to we're going to get a reaction from there whether it's a whole nother leg down or maybe what grega uh would propose maybe not um it will be interesting to see but i i, Great I know call, wizard. yeah very very awesome awesome uh awesome call and i know you weren't even feeling uh uh at, at the top of your game either i need yeah. to trade on more antibiotics like grega <laughs> <laughs> so greg i'm gonna i'm gonna pass you the screen i've got to get on out of here um but but yeah. guys make sure you stick around with greg so he can give you a great overview uh from an elliott wave perspective on on how he feels about the fx market so uh greg it is passed over to you okay. hey uh, blake don't forget to wear your weight belt to support your lower back today <laughs> okay all right buddy all, all right, right. Thank you, guys <laughs> see you blake hiya greg uh Still. Hey, how are you? Good, so, man. Uh, Steve is also not around. No. no. It's just you and me, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So, so I can talk today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very subtle, yes. You yes. have the floor. You have the floor, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, regarding Euro dollar, um, now we have seen quite aggressive sell-off, uh, but I really, honestly, I don't trust sell-off that occur on Monday with such sharp maneuver like we have seen this week. So uh, I really would not be surprised if the first start of the week is very strong, that in the second part of the week we see some kind of different price move. So, in my opinion, we may see a slowdown of the euro dollar, at least temporary, if not for a larger recovery. So we are here at a new swing low, but if you look at this substructure, you can still see that there are some overlaps and that at this stage from here down to, to current lows cannot be, count, cannot be counted as an impulse. So my favorite idea is that this is actually just a deep complex wave B that can move into a new extreme, but only as part of a flat correction, which means that this Wave two can still be unfolding, but maybe as a more sideways price action, okay, like that. So, so, um, so it's B at new lows. Uh, you guys call that an irregular B because it took out the prior A low. Yeah, so it's actually where wave B moves to new extreme, yes, which means beyond starting point of wave right. A. Right. Yes, okay. So, it, so wave two cannot be a zigzag or a simple ABC structure, but complex correction which is called as a flat okay so in such, in such case we may see a bounce but for a bounce of course i want to see that some technical levels will hold because wave b obviously um 
should be limited somewhere how long it can go. So actually 123.8% extension of wave A is my maximum, okay? Um, so for now we are still in safe zone, if I can say it like that. So uh, this 1.12 level, I think it's uh, very, very important. We are also here at this uh, channel support, parallel channel support. So ideally we will see a bounce. Uh, also what I would be watching, here is development on a one hour chart. So I'm tracking a five wave decline. And once we see another push to the downside, be aware of a reversal. Now, even if your dollar is headed straight to the downside and we will not see any major reversal for that wave C up, I still think that there will be a corrective rally for a larger recovery. Okay, so as a black, uh, black set, I think that this a free wave rally, minimum free wave rally should take us from a new low back to 1.13 level. And we will see what happens there. If previous support or previous low will turn into a resistance, which means we get more sell off, then I really think that euro dollar could be um, headed much lower. But if we see a push higher in inclusive fashion, which means in five waves rather than only in three waves, then of course this would be called as a failure breakdown through those, especially. Uh, if we consider that in such case we would be also back above these August levels, so I would get even more confident that wave C could take us higher. Also, the weekly close price I think can be very important. Now we have seen several pushes here below this 200 uh, moving average, uh, but always then recovered. Okay, so we are now trading below it, but until you see a close of the weekly price, because close is the most important price of the week or of the day on a daily basis. So I would be very interested to see what will happen there. And I would really be even more confident regarding that recovery uh, if we may be close back at uh, the highs, or I should say above uh, this week open price. Okay. Also, there is uh, some divergence <clears throat> on the RSI, also strong divergence uh, I should zoom this in on this MACD. So I really think I'll not be surprised if we see, at least as I said, corrective recovery. Uh, any questions? Dave? <clears throat> hey, uh, Greg, uh, you mean from um... From people on uh, asking for yes. for uh, tickers to look at, yeah. Um, we have our friend uh, Mashari who's looking for sterling kiwi. If you can have a look at that, please. Mm, sterling kiwi, okay. Mm, but no questions regarding your dollar. Ah, no, sorry, no, no. no I thought you okay. meant if you have any other uh, questions, okay. Um, sterling kiwi, okay. So. Uh, <clears throat> This one uh, appears to be breaking to the downside. We are trading, as you can see, below very major uh, trend line support here after previously only seven waves of recovery, which is a complex correction. So I think that this is a very clear pattern which suggests much, much weaker prices. Now, looking at the daily chart, we have to understand that nothing moves into a straight line. As you know, uh, in the previous uptrend, there, despite higher prices, there were very solid and healthy pullbacks, right? So I would be expecting some, something similar now when we are in a downtrend. So I would be watching and expecting a wave B or wave two rally back into the area of a former wave four. Uh, since we can count five waves of decline. So uh, watch out for resistance. If we get a nice rally, of course, uh, up at uh, 1.9650 around there or uh, 100, 150 pips lower. But uh, ideally we will get more weakness after a free wave recovery. And I would not be surprised if this free wave recovery is already underway, okay? Uh, of course, you will have to see a major push let's say uh, in five ways back to 1.938 in such case i would definitely be uh in inside of the temporary bulls for a higher pullback so uh, any pullback could face uh, limited upside because as i said it will be part of this 
uh, don't trade the time expecting to unfold too much lower prices based on the weekly prediction. Um, also, uh, this may have a strong relationship also with cable because if you look at this uh, corrective channel up from 2016 lows, and now we'll look at the cable, and you can actually see uh, this is really. You can actually see that cable also from up from 2016 loss also moved very nicely to the downside with a decisive break below this uh, trend line support. So I think that even cable is uh, headed to the downside and maybe this one will cause more weakness on uh, pound crosses as well. But of course, firstly, we have to see our completed uh, wave two, which may not be over yet. Ideally, as I said, also in a week ahead video, we will see, we may see a retest of these uh, September levels before we go to the downside. Now, if I'm on the right track with that uh, euro dollar, then of course, cable could follow the same path here, also move to higher resistance levels. Okay, uh, Jürgen. Hey, who's that? Yeah, I'm I'm it's Steve. I'm actually at the vet and I'm watching the webinar. Any uh, just a question uh -huh. for you? And any chance? Greg, any chance you, thought, this... you thought he was going to leave you alone, right? Yeah, I think you thought so. <laughs> any chance? <laughs> any chance? <laughs> any, any chance Steve, we... No, no, uh, no call from, <laughs> from the vet. Yeah, so. right. You know oh, those are comfy rolls for crying out loud. <laughs> Any chance we're going to have a triangle uh, unfolding here for the cable before lower? Mm, yes, actually that's a very good idea, but uh, the reason what, why I'm not looking for a triangle is because if I'm on the right track with this whole major trend where I'm still expecting wave 5 to drop towards new lows and then we see our reversal to the upside, in such case this decline in wave C should unfold in five waves. And if that's the case, then this is now wave two, which means it cannot be a triangle because in a, in a wave, because triangles are not allowed in wave two. So if this is going to be a triangle, it's fine, but then some other major developments are happening. So because still I don't have enough information actually to confirm this as a triangle, but of course it's possible. I favor the idea that we are maybe still in a way to make a flat correction. Okay, mate. Okay, thank you. Okay. But hey, Steve, think, uh, Steve, uh, is uh, does that agree with what your cat thinks? My cat is currently sedated, so I think you know doesn't think much. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's okay, Steve. Well, okay. I hope to, so too. I'll know soon. All right, but, thank you. All right. So, Greg, uh, I don't think you're going to get <laughs> any more calls from veterinary offices today. So, go well, ahead. Bye. Since we are at cable, okay, now uh, there are two different things it's analysis and it's trading. So, regarding analysis, we know that simply we are probably just in a corrective phase and sooner or later we will see more weakness. But when it comes to trading, even if I'm still expecting maybe uh, to see a retest of September levels, I think that the short-term structure is very clear. We have seen um, this nice reversal down from uh, last week, which in an intraday chart is in five waves. So even if this is going to be a temporary pullback that can take us toward 78.6% of previous rally, I think there can be opportunity on the short side, because as I said, we have five waves of decline. And so far we have a three wave recovery. Not only that, we have a free wave recovery exactly back into this Sunday gap. And as you know, when Sunday, when those gaps are filled, firstly, because they act like a magnet, because there are unfilled orders. And once they are filled, uh, new flows may occur because, of course, these new orders that were activated causes a new change, uh, may cause a new change in trend. So ideally, we will see a drop back to the lows, either for a very strong wave three or for a wave C. So from a trading perspective, I think that this resistance can be very, very interesting. Because all, after all, we are, uh, dollar is still in an uptrend. Okay, so if, as I said, it's, there are two different things, analysis and trading. And when you're trading, you probably want to trade in the direction that is happening right now. Okay, right. Um, 
so that's regarding cable. Uh, also, uh, we probably should look at the S&P 500 uh, because of the very nice uh, turn to the downside uh, yesterday. Uh, so what is happening? We have seen a very nice break uh, on this four hour chart below uh, this trend line support. So it appears that the market is making a new bearish lag, especially if we consider that we have also turned down from the previous swing high. Uh, also, if we take a look on a one hour time frame, I think I have it somewhere here. Okay, or I don't. <clears throat> yes, it's here. So, uh, on the one hour time frame, we can see that this decline has unfolded in five waves. So, uh, it means that more weakness should follow after a free wave of, uh, of recovery. Ideally, we are now just moving sideways here for wave B. So watch out for another push higher into wave C, but then maybe limited upside could be seen around this former swing low. So let me just level this. Okay. So first resistance is here at 27.63. The second and also important one is a little bit higher at 27.94. But why I would pay more attention to this one? Because this lag, as you can see, was the fifth wave was extended when you compare to the previous lags waves of waves one and waves three. And when fifth wave is extended, you tend to see prices to retrace back to the starting point of wave four, which was here, and not to the ending point or termination level of wave four, which was here. Okay, so that's why this resistance could be uh, maybe even more important than the higher one. Um, also, there will be 50% uh, replacement coming in, so watch out for potential new sell-off from 27.65 around there. Uh, now, if you're trading FX, maybe you should look uh, for very weak uh, yen crosses, and euro yen is probably one of them. Uh, so, because if stocks will continue to the downside, then obviously you want to look for potential trading opportunities uh, in the direction of this. Uh, sentiment, which means Japanese yen could strengthen. Um, and if you take a look at this wave structure, it's pretty clear. We have waves one, two, wave three, actually it's five sub waves within wave three. That was a wave four bounce, and now we have seen a completed wave five, right at this old uh, swing support. So ideally, we are now in a free wave recovery, making a um, setback back to the previous wave four region. So again, 50% could be very important, maybe even 61.8%. But generally speaking, this is the zone where I would look probably for shorts. If we will see, once we are at this uh, zone, if we will see a free wave rally. Okay, so ABC structure would be, would be my idea for a short from that region, especially because, as I said, stock markets are looking to be in a very similar uh, similar stage. Uh, so Yuri, I'm definitely on my radar screen uh, for the next what, 24, 48 trading hours. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, we can take a look at any questions maybe. I'm not sure if I see. Serious, um, how about, uh, so uh, sure how about Swiss? Questions by myself. I'm here, I'm here, buddy. Okay, okay, so uh, I have one question. I watched your uh, look at the week ahead video. Uh, any update on Swiss? Is it pretty similar to Euro? Mm, on Swiss? Yeah. And then we're uh, you're getting questions on US dollar, yen, and pound kiwi. Okay. Uh, pound kiwi will be already covered. Uh, okay, so uh, <coughs> Swiss, I still think that we may see a pullback here. I'm tracking to wave two. Not sure if this wave two was already finished here because if you compare this pullback to the previous pullback, you can see that they were, they were quite similar. But if we are in a pullback of a wave two of a higher degree, because this was a fourth wave of a lesser degree, I want to see also something more complex or at least longer in time. So Thank from you. that perspective, I would, it's, the price is just too high for me to belong, 
um, but definitely would have my interest if we would uh, test uh, supports a little, a little bit lower. So uh, the area of a former wave four for sure. And so uh, I just think that uh, actually we may see this pullback, especially if euro dollar would recover. Uh, also on a, here on a daily chart, of course, uh, nothing has changed. Uh, I still think that it's just a matter of time when we'll see again prices printing uh, above 2016 levels. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. So US dollar yen was asked by Ben R. Where okay. you're at there. Dollar yen is a very critical point here. Now to be honest, I was I'm short dollar yen, and the reason why I played it on the short side was very simple because I saw stocks moving into this resistance uh, on the S P five hundred up to uh, twenty eight twenty. Uh, That's why and, I did it. Greg, and it certainly hasn't paid off. It's been so resilient during risk off. Yes, it, you know, it's it's fight between dollar and Japanese yen. Everyone are, they're buying dollars and buying Japanese yen in a risk off environment. So it was probably not the best pair to trade in such environment because they are just fighting each other. So that's I why think, I think it's following yields more closely than the market. What do you think? Yes, it's, a, it's also very interesting that we haven't seen any significant moves on uh, on treasuries, despite some volatility recently that we have seen on the, on stocks. So maybe we have to see some action there before. Yeah, you know, Greg, I want to hear something funny. I kept looking at the 10-year yield chart all day yesterday and saying, boy, is it quiet. And uh, they were closed because of Veterans Day. That's why that's why the bond market was quiet yesterday. Oh, huh, interesting. Yeah, I know. I go, wow, the bonds are quiet with you know S and P's down forty. It's because you know they closed. Uh, government offices were closed. Bonds closed. Oh, okay. Good. So we'll see so, some action today. So despite dollar yen uh, with very unclear situation here, I still see here now from a basic technical perspective you would probably level or mark this also as a wedge, right? So uh, I would not be surprised if we see a price is coming off a little because uh, wedge and overlapping shape means that bulls are not that strong. And this is clearly evident through this chart. You can see a very strong recovery here, but now the second stage of this recovery is going slower. So momentum is decreasing and you would expect that sooner or later will increase. And normally the web suggests this will occur in the opposite direction, which means to the downside. Of course, you would have to see some important levels to be taken out before this can be confirmed. Uh, but if we can take this trend line support out connected from November, uh, from November 1st, I really think that there is still a chance for uh, dollar yen to come down. Okay, so uh, the short term invalidation level clearly remains at the highs at 114.55. But even if this is an ending diagonal, the um, push above 114.25 could already be in very important evidence that maybe after all, this is not going to be a wedge and that we will see a spike above these uh, October highs because, in such case, wave three would be the shortest, which is not allowed when you are tracking a motive wave structure, okay? Yeah, Between they want those stops up there, I think, Grega. They're just a cut yes. feeling. Yes, yeah. but uh, even I would probably look for a second chance for dollar yen shorts, even if we go or see more gains, uh, because we have potential wedge forming even here on a daily time frame. Okay, I like that. Yeah, so, and also uh, what is very important here is that if you compare the first part of this recovery up uh, from 2018 lows, okay, to the second part, you can see that equality of these levels are just above these previous October highs, right? Right there. And also that would be happening in fifth wave of this potential ending diagonal here in the wave zero daily chart. Also, also what uh, is important that we are still 
trading at these resistance levels um, of this contracting range con uh, connected down from uh, 2015 high. So I still think that this can be actually waved in place. Also, yeah. uh, oh, just a second. Also, there is 61.8%, yeah. right? That can be also very important. A lot of yes, confluence yeah. at that 115 level after all the shorts are gone. Yeah, so uh, of course it's that. That's why I'm saying that even if we see a push to new high, it doesn't mean that trend is bullish, right? It may be just a failure push higher, and then we see a drop. I thought that maybe dollar yen would come lower into wavy even from that October high, but based on a big picture, based on uh, this. Second count that I'm tracking, I still think that uh, it's not the right time to look uh, or turn aggressively bullish because it can be something else once those stops are cleared, as you said yourself. Okay, and let's see. <clears throat> A lot of requests. Um, USD CAD is yes. another one. Okay, so uh, dollar CAD, I mean, this one. It's really a textbook example. We have seen a clear ABC decline back to the area of a former wave four. This was wave four support. Now we were in a higher degree of wave four, which take us back to the same levels. We have bounced from there. Uh, also, we took out this very important trend line resistance, which means that this ABC line is probably completed and that we are headed higher. Also, this trend line turned into a very nice support right there. Okay, it was the same region. If you also connect, oops, if you connect, also connect this um, lower trend line connected from September's swing block. So I think that this pair is clearly headed to the upside. Recently, we also went out of this downward channel in the corrective wave two is slightly completed. So uh, I think that any, pullbacks on a smaller time frame chart would be just uh, part of this trend that is going on right now. So I think the dollar cap could continue much higher. Also, crude oil is extremely bearish. I see crude oil uh, going much, much lower, especially after any bounce. So uh, during uh, this phase, of course, dollar cap, I think, should remain supported. Okay, let's see. I think we have time for one more, buddy. How about uh, uh, Euro Aussie from <clears throat> Euro Aussie. Uh, I was hunting this one for short last week, but I didn't get it. So uh, what is going on is actually I was looking for shorts here in this wave four, but I was hoping for higher resistance to be uh, retested. Maybe I was just too selective based on um risk reward setup because i want always my stops to be somewhere <clears throat> if not in wave two at least somewhere around this wave two levels but because it was a triangle i thought that downside is limited so risk reward setup was not perfect that's why I just stay aside and um i still probably will look for a new opportunity but after a corrective bounce uh, since we are here as you can see turning aggressively to the downside, probably making the impulse because very strong moves like this represents personality of an impulse. So I would be expecting a pilot drop to unfold lower into wave A. Now we are still in a wave three. And if we look at this <clears throat> short-term wave structure, uh, I would not be surprised. Well, I can just update this count real quick. So probably we are still in this completing wave three of lower degree. Okay. So watch out for a pullback. Now pullback can take us back to the pivot point of that previous triangle. Okay. So which these levels. Got it. Okay, so Euro Aussie, I really, I really like uh, how Euro Aussie is playing out here, <clears throat> but 
for shorts, you need probably you need a deeper core. You want a deeper corrective recovery to show this from a little bit better levels. Okay, Gregor, thank you so much for stepping up. What a great team we have, you know. Steve mm -hmm. has a cat emergency, and uh, I know you've been under the weather. Great week ahead video, and thank you so much, Gregor, for being with us and sharing your views today. I hope you feel better. Yes, I do. I do. I really do. Okay. All right. Great. All right, everyone. So, uh, uh, Gregor, I want to thank Gregor for his Elliott views of Wizard of Waves, award winner on FX Street. And I tell you what, the momentum will keep going with Seth Golden. I'm looking forward to meeting and talking to Seth. So, Seth, I'm making you the presenter right now and looking forward to seeing your screen and hearing your voice. I see your screen, buddy. Let's see if you're unmuted. I'm unmuting you right now. You're self-muted, so you have to unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. There Can you, you hear go. Me now, Dan? Yeah, I got you, Seth. Oh, thank you, thank you. Very, it's my pleasure to meet you, to be here with you and your audience. Thank you for the invitee. Oh, and what great timing, you know, with all the volatility. And I know you have a, a passion for trading VIX products and VIX. And uh, it's great to meet you, Seth. Uh, I, I always, you know, the first time I interview somebody, I'm always interested in how they ended up in this industry and what was your foray and into it. Uh, uh, where did you come from before you got involved in the trading business? Um, well, I, I came from the retail world. Um, I worked in retail for a good uh, 12, 13, uh, 14 years maybe. Uh, I okay. worked previously for uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, Target, the former sports authority through right. college, a um, number of different retailers. Uh, but what uh, really got me into, I was always fascinated by the equity markets and portfolio management and just the general idea of investing in the markets. Uh, but what really, uh, you know, my foray into the markets or what propelled me was um, in 19, <laughs> don't you hate when you start the century off with 19, it kind of dates you already. Um, no, but in, no, no. <laughs> in 99, <laughs> um, I was looking at my grandmother's uh, statements from, from her brokerage account. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this was, you know, pre... Before the bubble, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Before it was... Uh, A.G. Edwards was her, uh, you know, the manager of the account. And, you know, I started looking at him. And each successive time that I would look at it, it would be less and less money. We were talking large, large sums of money, uh, you know, for a 90-year-old woman. And... Um, I started to get concerned. She really didn't know one way or the other at that age. She had um, right. you know, the onset of dementia and whatnot. So I was taking care of a lot of, uh, you know, her her daily issues and 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 uh, you know making sure nurses were there in her home and everything. What a great, right what a great got, what a great uh, grandson. A lot, a lot are too busy. <laughs> Nice, so, nice. Uh, yeah, so I told her at one point, I said, we should go and, and meet with the, you know, the manager and the account. And we did, and we sat down, and I realized that she was in assets that she had no business being in. She was in somewhat risky assets, um, and it, it just didn't make a lot of sense. A lot of mutual funds, and, the you know, what I knew of, you know, the risk value premium and and her age and everything she should have been more heavily levered into other asset classes than the you know general equities and mutual funds so yeah I, yeah it we, didn't make a lot of sense but it made a lot of commissions which i later found out was yep. the rationale <laughs> for the it yeah, was more uh, of course. about the brokerage commissions like you just said so yeah. uh we liquidated the account and i um yeah, I just decided to put it into um, an account in her name with Scott Trade. This is way back when. And um, it, it 
you know, I would just look at the markets every day. I, you know, took out my little spreadsheet on the stocks that I would, that I liked, that I understood, you know, the company's business models and I was familiar with. And I would just track the movement day in and day out until finally, I think in 2000, you know, I did my first trade and that's where it all began. From there, you know, I was still working retail. Um, I, you know, I started a pretty good career with Target. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much where the social media community um, came to know me best. Um, I was uh, featured in the New York Times last year as the quote unquote ex Target manager turned millionaire by trading the fear index. Wow. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. So uh uh and your and your first foray into it was, you know, just out of caring for somebody. So let me ask you this. Uh how did you gravitate towards Vix products and uh once you knew this was something you wanted to delve into, did you have other people that influenced you? How did you learn to trade? Did you have mentors or books that influenced your methods today or were you completely self-taught i i don't think i would i, I would lean 90 percent self-taught 10 percent reading discovery making mistakes just general okay. experience but yeah i did read a couple of books um you know uh, around the you know when i started first trading 2000 2001 um, mostly what I learned from those books was the state of emotion that goes into you know, uh, investing your own capital and how was to... Was that a trading in the zone? Um, it may have been. It may yeah. have been. It was... A, all I, in, go to, trading's all in our heads, isn't it? Yeah, you go back to Amazon's hit list and yeah. I yeah, I chose the most popular one. <laughs> but... Okay. Uh, so yeah, mostly 90% self-taught. I did a lot of day trading back then, in and out in the same day, not holding anything overnight, um, unless I had to, because you know psychologically nobody likes to take a loss. And when you are a new trader, you don't realize that um, there are advantage to take advantages to taking small losses as opposed to bigger losses, because you think yeah. something's going to turn around for a rationale that you've not supported with anything but hope per se. <laughs> yeah. uh, so over the next couple of years, I developed more into a swing trader. <laughs> and uh, I would say by 2000 and about 2010, so after the great financial crisis, uh, I was actually doing sell side analytical work for a boutique research firm um, that we we created, me and uh, myself and um, some partners, called Capital Ladder Advisory Group. Um, so that really helped um, or facilitated my, uh, you know, some of my uh, better trading strategies uh, over the years. Doing actual sell side analytics, deep dive research um, into. And, and staying true to the categories or the industries that I know. I, I do truly believe in invest in what you know and understand. Anything beyond that, um, you you generally will have to lean more heavily on uh, third party works, ideas, and opinions. Um, and that okay. just never carried a lot of weight with me. Okay, so uh, let's go fast forward and. Uh... Talk about okay. your some of your methodologies and some of the things that you're seeing and uh, what you look for for market tells. I know you talk about contangos and backwardation a lot when you're uh, trading VIX. So uh, take it away. Yeah, so I started uh, tr well learning first about the volatility complex, the VIX, and the derivatives of the VIX you know, within the. VIX complex uh, back in 2011. Uh, it was it was in 2009 that the first uh, exchange traded products, VIX exchange traded products, became uh, or came to market. Um, but when I was working for Capital Ladder Advisory Group, we we catered to the hedge fund industry. Our research and white papers were uh, purchased by subscription, um, the different institutions and hedge funds. And one of our 
clients um, asked me to read, and, and this was in 2011, this prospectus on pro shares uh, for ticker symbols SVXY and UVXY. Okay. So I read it. I didn't really understand it because I didn't have any foundational grounds in uh, futures. Um, right. So I, I just didn't understand it that well. And but I read, I you know gave it a good read, kind of brushed it to the side. Um, but then you know I told the the client that it seemed pretty complex. It's probably <laughs> you know better to give this to somebody else with an expertise in futures and the derivatives market. So. He believed that I could do it. Um, at that time, I was basically the axe in SodaStream, uh, Keurig Green Mountain, uh, you know, a lot of the consumer packaged goods stocks I was writing research for and you know, making calls, if you will. Isn't it nice and, when someone believes in you more than you do in yourself? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> he, even, uh, he decided, you know, I believe in you so much, we'll pay you an extra fee. Oh, well, no, now I understand the motivation. <laughs> no, not entirely. I want to learn. I'm always up for a right. challenge. Yeah. And okay. uh, you know, this, this was something that it was, it confused me. It just confused me. But if, you know, if, if somebody else believes in you and they've been with you a while, um, you know, you want to give it your extra effort. And so I did. And I, you know, I went the extra mile. I actually, you know, was able to get on the phone and have dialogues with, you know, the fund managers or the, authorized personnel and that's what you know brought about the evolution in, in my understanding or you know the light switch went off and so i felt okay now i understand what these products are these vix exchange traded products um let me put it into action so i started trading <coughs> excuse me uh uvxy um about 2012 and it was going badly because I read the prospectus and I believe that this is, you know, the prospectus says this, so you should do that. Okay. The problem with, well, I shouldn't say the problem, but with these particular products in this particular industry being uh, the VIX complex, you, you have to be able to think about the prospectus, the verbiage in the abstract. Um, some of the way that the prospectus is written, you could almost say it's because in order to get it approved, um, they have to write it this way. Um, for all practical purposes, though, you almost have to do the opposite of what the, you know, the verbiage is telling you. And that's when I started to see success in in participating within this, uh, you know, particular complex. By taking the uh, taking the other side of the trade because of. Uh... Uh, an erosion and decay, and uh, I bet the uh, did the prospectus say anything about uh, you will suffer going through multiple yeah. reverse <laughs> yes. splits, multiple reverse splits over the years. Yes, and you could suffer large large drawdowns if you hold yeah. overnight. We okay. you know they only recommend uh -huh. it as a you know day trading product, basically nothing to be see. held in long duration use options, um, all of that, you know, type of uh, suggestive language is in there. Um, but you, I learned that if you did the opposite, that's where the greater success is. Anything you're trying to day trade, there's a certain amount of gambling involved uh, because any on any given day, the market, go, market can go in any different direction. A sector can go in any different direction. So what I found is, what I found out rather you know, quickly was that if I had actually given myself more duration in the trade, it would eventually work out to to my understanding of the the overall VIX complex or fear in the market. Um, and I have been doing that pretty much ever since. From 2012 to present, I've basically been investing in VIX exchange traded products, which is in and itself an oxymoron. Um, so far as most people believe, um, you know, how you should participate in the complex. Be where they're not is, is what I've been doing. Where, where, where most people are, you know, not participating in this manner, I am. And it's, it's worked out well. And, and 
can you give us a little bit more detail so most people are going to just be outright buyers of these products uh, uh, what's your methodology you know there's been a, a fortune made over the years uh, writing or shorting uh, VIX derivative products like TVIX and et cetera. And except for what happens every once in a while, like January, February, when the VIX right. spiked to 50 and wiped all the sellers out, uh, that's the way most people go. Is that what you normally do? So along my journey in the VIX complex, I learned that in order to understand volatility, it would be best to also understand macroeconomics and what's going on that influences the markets and sentiment over time. Um, so I got heavily involved in, in all aspects of economics, be them homegrown or across the pond, if you will. Um, so that has helped facilitated my, my participation as well. But um, so far as a, an overview on how exactly I trade these instruments. Um, UVXY has been my favorite. <clears throat> it's an inverse. It's an inverse um, leveraged right. exchange traded product, uh, formerly leveraged 2x. Um, but since you know, as you noted, Dale, um, back in February with the what they call the Volmageddon, where the VIX spiked over 100% in a single day, a lot of the VIX exchange traded products were deleveraged. <coughs> Okay. So, you so what was the one that there was one that was even delisted, wasn't it? I think it was the long. It uh, uh, yes. No, it was a short. It was a short. It was a short. Product. It was um XIV. XIV. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, it's gone, yeah. right? That one's gone. That was a Credit Suisse um instrument uh -huh. um that was eliminated, and then you had SVXY, which was also delevered. Um, it was only a 1x instrument, but now it's 0.5x. So, um, you know, uh, Seth, I'd like to switch gears since you, sure. you know, told us a little bit about that you had to really learn about uh, macroeconomics and, you know, how the, the market's kind of a big jigsaw puzzle. You know, I believe that the fulcrum of the wheel is currency and all, all other asset classes spin around it. What's your view on what's happening here with, uh, you know, the dollar strength and emerging markets and global markets under pressure? And finally, uh, the rest of the world, you know, uh, has pneumonia and we finally caught a cold. Uh, what are you thinking here uh, about market structure? Well, um, you know, I think the world is, well, they're trying to gravitate to where the last Canyon of strength is, and that seems to be the the U.S. economy. Um, I th I think we're in a stage of somewhat self fulfilling prophecies, where you know we feared the the peak in economic cycles for so long, and now that we've um, had this long standing expansion cycle in bull market, global and domestic, that um, it's got to come to an end because we're hitting these certain levels with regards to the various different uh, economic indicators. Uh, so from that do you, point, do you agree? Do you agree with that? That uh, just because the dur duration was long, that you know, I, I hear a lot of people say we're late cycle, but late cycle and the end of the cycle are two different things, aren't they? Right. Um, well, no, in hindsight, of course, uh, right. I'm of the opinion, I'm of the opinion that we still have a good 12 months, at least, at least it could be longer than that, but we have a good 12 months of expansion ahead of us. Um, okay. we flow, it seems more than probable that we will have a similar slowing growth here in the U S going into 2019. Um, just be, you have just the general laws of large numbers that that prove an obstacle, as well as consumption tending to hit a peak. It doesn't mean that it uh, from that level it'll crash, but you get some moderation. Moderation in and of itself will will prove to slow the economy. 
do I think it's it'll result in anything recessionary next year? I think that has a lower probability. Um, so uh, duration wise, no, I don't subscribe to the to the theory that because we've been in such a long expansion period um, that there's an expiration date. It, it comes down to the uh, the consumer. You know, we're 70 percent consumer driven economy. As the consumer goes, we go. Can we be impacted from time to time? Um, you know, with that, with outside influences, yes. But ultimately, it comes down to the consumer and what the consumer is doing. Okay. All right. So uh, we have this big break in October and had a real nice relief rally in S and P's after the election. Actually, sixty one eight back, and now we're. Uh, giving yeah. up a lot of those gains, uh, you have a market view on uh, as a VIX trader. I would right. assume that you have biases or signals directionally. Do you? Yeah, I, I look at various signals. I look at uh, skew. I look at uh, the volatility of volatility index. I look at the put call ratio. Uh, you name it. What um, do you do so here? I of- mean. And sometimes the right trade is no trade. You know that's an option. You know, you know. Sometimes I, I'm not afraid to say I don't know. I'd rather right. bore people than mislead them. So, uh, are, are you in an I don't know stage here, Seth? Um, no, I, I still have some co- uh, some confidence regarding the year end and and how the market will trend through year end. I do believe we'll finish the year higher than we are right now. Um, okay. Even if that means that it'll be choppy, um, I do believe we'll, we'll be higher. Um, do you the think the, uh, the Fed blows uh, from early in the year hold in the S&Ps while maybe being vulnerable in NASDAQ or something like that? That would be a that would be tough. Um, yeah. I would totally concede to if we went down that low from the recent peak in September, um, that would be tough to come back from for sure. Okay. Just okay. You know, we we don't have a lot of time, um, uh, you know, to make it back from there. Um, but if we hold the o- October lows, um, okay. have the re- we have the retailers reporting really strong sales, and you know, we'll hear from Walmart, we'll hear from Target, Macy's, et cetera, in the coming days and weeks. We have retail sales coming out on Thursday, which should be a strong report. Um, the economic data is, is strong. Of course, that comes with its own headwinds, which is, well, then why does the Fed need to pause? And that's, you know, part of what's weighing on, on markets is, uh, you know, the Fed hiking interest rates and seemingly on autopilot. Um, I think in December, you'll see some adjustment in the language that might okay. reflect. So we get uh, a dovish might, rate hike? Is that your expectation? A dovish rate hike, yeah, that possibly points to, uh, you know, a pause at some point in, in 2019. So you get the rate hike, which is almost a certainty uh, in December, but the language may may signal or flag a, a pause um, at some point in, in 2019. And that's really what the markets want to see, in my opinion. The markets want to see a Fed that's not on autopilot, that even though their uh, you know, inflation mandate is well in check and the employment mandate is well in check, other factors are impacting uh, you know, certain aspects are, of our economy and could Hello. impact. How about the tariff impact? Uh, does that go into your equation at all? It's or is it more psychological. Twenty-five percent on two hundred fifty billion sounds like a lot of money. It does. It, it it really isn't though. And when you look at corporate, you know what 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 companies are saying on the earnings call and how many times they're mentioning it. You know, in Q3 versus Q2, they've actually mentioned it less times. Um, the impact is is minimal, but it's not. It's a confluence. So all the questions that you're you're mentioning or, or asking, Dale, are, are a perfect um, perspective of how so many things right now. The U.S. dollar, crude oil. Will the Fed, uh, you know, hit the pause button or not? Tariffs. When you combine all that into you know a market that has gone up for so long and the economy has that has expanded for so long. 
<laughs> and in the fang stocks that have you know taken the tech sector down you've got a, a big wall of worry probably the biggest wall of worry that we've had in the last eight nine years i agree um, so yeah yeah it, it's, uh, it, it's may you live in interesting times <laughs> yes the, uh, uh, the shakespearean curse uh well it was definitely an interesting 25 minutes with you seth uh Thank why don't you yeah. take, the, t take the time to show your website and let people know how they could reach you and what your services are like <laughs> and uh Absolutely. you know could show it now and talk about it i'm sorry can you see my screen got it yeah so yeah. there's a phenom group Yes, so, um, so we, we started phenomgroup.com uh, December 26th, the day after Christmas last year. Um, we specialize in, in VIX trading strategies, um, but we also, uh, because we're VIX oriented, uh, we focus on macroeconomics. So most of the daily articles and research reports have that slant, if you will. Okay. Uh, we offer a weekly research report largely focused on U.S. corporate earnings and macroeconomic fundamentals. Um, it's a very interactive site. Um, it has everything from chat rooms um, to private messaging. Beautiful. Yeah, we uh, you can. You believe, uh, you believe in the value of communities after having one. I do oh, because it, it, yeah. they lend themselves to. Oh, to there's die. David Lincoln, the famous yeah. Dave. Yep. yep. I know famous. Dave. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, great guy. Right. Um, yeah. So the site is 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 very interactive. Uh, we have daily videos. We have a research video library uh, down here on the bottom. But as you can see, you know, and you can do all your postings. You can, like on your on Twitter, you can have your own right. uh, profile page where you put out your own tweet uh, tweets and post from here. Um, cool. I'm sorry. I said cool. Yeah. You know, so, I, I mean, it's, you know uh, I'm from the '60s and '70s. We offer trade alerts as well as investment thesis. Um, to date, um, all of our trade alerts are have a you know 100% hit record. We've had uh, we had a huge oil play in Anadarko Petroleum earlier this year with a 35% gain. Uh, we had a Facebook trade with a 10%, an XRT, which is the retail sector spiders, 10%. Uh, we try to get a 10% um, return on on investment for our for our actual investment thesis. And okay. uh, we've done that pretty much all this year. We had a great trade on Walmart. Um, right now we're, we're, we like the, you know, we're in the financials. Starbucks was another winner that finally realized itself in this quarterly report, which we did well over 10% return. Um, and then we do a lot of scalps and swing trades through our private Twitter feed. Um, oh, okay, you have one of those yeah. too. Yeah, we what have- What do you charge now. for your, what do you charge? So for a, a premium subscription, which gives you access to everything that I just mentioned, it's $39.99. Um, for just the research uh, reports and daily articles and halftime video blog, it's $2.99. And you also have access to the chat rooms. The main reason we charge for that is to uh, keep spammers away. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, you know, it sounds real reasonable for the quality of content that you provide, Seth. Uh, like thank it or not, you're now my trading warrior brother, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to address our community and wish you a great holiday uh, with your family and trading season and that gains continue. What part of the country are you in, Seth? Uh, we are in a chilly Florida, so it's 68 oh, okay. degrees right now. Uh, okay, so uh, <laughs> uh, you know, really no snow, no snowflakes for you, but no. uh, have a have a great uh, fall and winter trading season, and uh, let's Thank keep you. in touch. Will do. Thank you for having me, Dale. An honor to have that badge as your trading warrior brother. Uh, thank you, Seth, and you're a great uh, life story of someone that uh, you know. Uh, your journey, God bless the broken road that led you right to VIX. Yes, thank you right? very much. Okay, buddy. So uh, that's, that's a wrap face. Turn around Tuesday. Tom Lando thanks you, Seth, uh, Mashari. Everyone have a great day. Remember, don't just count your pips.
count your blessings and I'll see you tomorrow or in the Thanks. member chat. Adios. Thanks again, Bye. Seth. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>